All right, I'm going to demonstrate the process I use to configure the hardware with a newly installed app. This could be an app installed on a fresh phone or an app um, that's a major revision increase or an app that's come from a different machine, so which meant removing the previous version of the app and replacing it with a new one. Uh, this phone has just had the new app installed on it. Uh, it had deleted the previous version. Uh, it has run, but it has never been associated with hardware yet. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to run the app. This is the robot controller. And you see there's no configuration set currently up here, it says so. And it's booted and it's not going to connect to anything because there's no driver station phone. Um, as far as I know, we shouldn't need the driver station. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the electronics. Now, the electronics are currently powered off. Uh, it's been off for a while. There are two motor controllers. There's a servo controller and a device interface module all hooked up to a standard unit. I stress the fact that you should have a fully charged battery when you do this because a partially charged battery is a, a problem when you're trying to configure a lot of devices. Don't know why, but it is. So I'm now just going to turn on the power to the power distribution. Uh, typically, this is the box you're looking for. This is uh, a box that comes up and says, you know, sort of, shall this uh, device be used by default by this FTC robot control application? And uh, the answer, of course, is yes. So in all cases, when you see this, you want to click the checkbox and you want to click OK. Now, on a new installation, this box sh should appear, or really has to appear, at least once for each device. So until you've seen that box, in my case, four times, it's really not fully configured. Uh, so what I typically do now is I go up to the uh, configuration, I go to the menu, and I say configure robot, and you know, it should tell, it will tell me that there's no configuration found. So that's the first thing. So I'm going to have to do a new configuration. And during this process, this box is going to appear several times. It's not completely clear to me why it appears at what time, but so this is the second occurrence. So if I accept this one here and say, okay, now I've actually uh, connected two devices that it knows about. Now you notice right there, it only shows one. Probably that's the one that I responded to the first time. At this point, I need to get that box to come up some more. So I'm going to hit scan, and I say, sure, I'll lose it. I don't care. See, now it's come up again. So this is my third time. And so now you'll see I'm getting more devices showing up on my list. I'm going to make this do this again. I'm going to hit scan again, and say, yeah, sure, I'll lose it. And you see, now it's popped up. This is my fourth time. So in theory now, I've acknowledged all the controllers. So only three are showing up, but that's because I just acknowledge one. So I'm going to say scan again, so you lose all channels. And now you see I have all four devices. This is typically what will happen. Now, uh, if you don't get all four of them, uh, what I typically do is just exit out of the app and start it up again and do the scan. And you just keep continually scanning until you get four occurrences of that box and all your devices show up. At which point now you can uh, do a standard configuration. So uh, that's a scan there. Uh, I'm just going to uh, cancel out of here. Now I know all my devices are present. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to say configure from template. So I come down here, configure from template. Uh, let's say we want a push bot. I hit configure and it's going to go out and see it's picked up the three devices that are assumed on a standard push bot. Uh, it's just chosen the controller with the, I the ID uh, AL00VINF for the wheels. Uh, AL00YB8B for the servos and AL00V10W for the tools. Now, um, you can do this by trial and error, but I happen to know that on my system, the controller that is the VIOW is actually the motor controller associated with the wheels. And I remember that because that little W on the end is, is my clue that it's the wheels, so that my wheels and my tools are both motor controllers, but it's chosen the wrong pair because it didn't really know which one was which. So in this case, all we do is we go to the wheels one, for example, select him, go over to swap. It's going to show me another available motor controller. See, here's the double one. I'm going to say, yes, take that one. And now done. And now you notice that my wheels are the W and the tools are the F. So now I know that my controllers are set up right. I can save this, give it a name. Spot. Okay, 
And now if I click the arrow, the back arrow down here, back again, you'll see that my current selection is PushBot and now it's connected. Now, if you didn't know which controller was which, you really couldn't swap it. So the next thing to do then is to connect up your driver station with an app that has been enabled to run the PushBot with an op mode uh, and attempt to run your robot. Now, um, you want to be very careful here because if the motors are assigned incorrectly, the arm will be on the wheels and motor. So you don't want to try and drive down the uh, um, <laughs> drive down the, the the field because your motor on your arm may turn in the wrong direction. So the best way to do this is to attempt to manually move the arm with the up and down buttons and see which of the actual motors turns. If either the wheels turn, you know you've got the controllers back to the front and you can swap them. If the arm moves, then you know you've got your controller set up correctly. And that's all there is to it.